Um, my name is Paisley. I, uh, I play guitar and sing and I'm the primary songwriter um, for the group. Uh, I'll go ahead and say I kind of wanted to have a band behind my original music for a really long time. And I struggled to find members for a while until I made friends with Laurel and Katie. And they were already two really good friends of mine who are incredibly talented musicians on multiple instruments. Um, and I kind of asked okay. them very nicely if they would want to be a part of it. And it's turned into something much bigger than um, I really ever thought it could be. They're such an integral part of the band and of my music process. Now it's really connected and interwoven and um, they both are huge influences on me. So um, yeah, that's what I have to say about it. <laughs> uh, I'll go next. Uh, my name is Laurel and I play drums in the band. Uh, yeah, it was um, Paisley and I, I guess, you know, we met through the music scene or whatever. Uh, and I actually liked her music and had seen her play before we were friends. And I was like, I'm gonna be friends with her. And um, yeah, and it worked. <laughs> so now, yeah, I play drums and um, it's really fun kind of hashing out, you know, uh, her originals and, you know, kind of hearing them come to life because I'd heard her play them, you know, acoustically for so long. Uh, and then, you know, hearing what her, her vision would be for drum parts or fills or whatever uh, it was cool to see come together. Hey, yeah, <laughs> um, and I'll go next. So I'm the last one. Um, I I joined the band by I believe request from your dad actually Paisley even too. It's funny he was like she's gonna be the bass player and so I just have enjoyed it so much since then. But I am the bass player and that is my part of the band. <laughs> um, both of you guys sing harmony vocals incredibly well, which is something that I had never even expected from a band before. And um, because both of them are also voice teachers, all three of us are voice teachers, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but I was gonna say, yeah, my dad uh, kind of saw Katie at uh, our shows and stuff and in our friend group. And when we'd hang out and he was like, I think she's your bass player. I was like, dad, Katie doesn't even play bass. And he's like, <laughs> I bet she would. <laughs> yeah, she didn't play bass at the time. She kind of like learned to play bass she had kind of messed around you know she played guitar it's not a not too bad of a transition but, but well, yeah. she's talented that it's yeah, like just like everybody it. in this band can kind of switch around um which is crazy so yeah yeah that's kind of cool that kind of is one thing that mistake often about like women guitarists and bass players and drummers is like they can't play those instruments like you're either a singer or like a pianist, like a pianist or whatever. So it's kind of cool that you just took something up so fast just to be part of the band and like, <laughs> we're really good at it. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it's super fun though. So, so that's what I know too. Love you. <laughs> so what kind of got you guys into music? What's your inspiration? Who do you listen to on the daily? Um, you go first. You want to, you guys want to go first. Uh, I, I think a lot of Shaky Graves. Shaky Graves was talking about him again last night, and he's he's got a lot of Americana feel and acousticness in it too. Uh, but he's like a number one up there. Y'all got anybody? Ooh, it's really hard for me to choose just because I listen to either like a lot of uh, of the I don't know classic bands from like the seventies or whatever. And I really uh, drum wise, I really loved listening to Led Zeppelin. And just because, you know, it, it was really, it's like the music is really complex and the fills are really complex, but it's a lot of like, just like 16th notes. And I was like, hey, I can, I can do that. I can do that. I can just move around with some 16th. So I uh, really liked listening to them on the drum side of things. Other than that, like I, you know, got into music because my mom is a musician. She was a studio musician and um, recorded a couple albums and um, so I kind of got into it because it was like a family thing um, but I loved vocally like listening to Nora Jones and like more stuff like that but when I started you know being a part of like a band and you know being able to like actually contribute like to something like that bigger like I could imagine then it was more like heavier kind of stuff or 
really funky stuff. So it was kind of like, I tried to like mix those in because I really love kind of like when we, do, when we covered the, the weight by the band, it's like kind of funky and like, it's got like a really cool groove to it, stuff that's kind of dancey, I've always liked. Um, I got into music just when I was in the womb. Like my, both of my parents were musicians. My dad uh, was a rock guitar player and had a band that toured kind of up and down the Southeast for gosh, like 20, 30 years. And then my mom was like a heavy metal singer in a bunch of bands. Um, and she sang like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and like all this really heavy stuff. And then my grandma was the pianist at our church for like 20 something years. And my great grandma has like a voice scholarship and her name at Columbia College, like she was a voice instructor. So that kind of goes way back. Um, and like my first kind of toy that my parents gave me was like a little Casio keyboard. <laughs> they like put little stickers on the notes and there's like videos of me doing it when I'm like three years old or something. So uh, also singing lots of Scooby-Doo songs uh, <laughs> was the, yeah, that was the jam. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, oh, the Hex Girls. I would stand in front of the oh. TV and like, ah, oh, the Hex Girl. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. I literally but, played um, that on my radio show before. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, yeah, those are, those are bops, dude. Um, <laughs> I was, but yeah, uh, I listen to all different kinds of music and I play all different kinds of music. Um, I get bored really easily, but my, my idea for my, my music more so is, um, I'm really drawn to things that have like a, like a funky Southern rock gospel, like Americana sort of feel. Um, so like Laurel said, I really like the band. Um, I love Little Feet and Mavis Staples and, um, gosh I'm trying to, there's so many we just put out a playlist on the bird walkers spotify I kind of picked all kinds of stuff that we're listening to right now uh Madison Cunningham there's uh her yes. oh my gosh she's so mm -hmm. good yes. um but I really like stuff that I don't know like it has it has a lot of soul to it like Laurel said Laurel's kind of got the funky soulful feel and Katie's got that on the bass too so I think um you know, initially my songwriting just started off on acoustic guitar. So a lot of it was more country, uh, folk oriented, because that kind of lends itself to that with just an acoustic guitar. But um, we kind of, hopefully in the future, we're going to move towards doing a little more soulful type stuff, because that's where we all are at, I think, in our kind of where we meet with our music tastes is anything that's got a good groove and some really good you know I think good female vocalists who can belt it out like that's that's where we're at or Tedeschi Trucks band that's another one I, know Ooh, I forgot all... about them yes yeah so her. she's amazing anything like that uh for sure and I know you talked about just now a little bit about your songwriting I know you just released two singles if you wanted to talk about kind of how that process of writing those was as a band as opposed to like how you used to write by yourself yeah, sure. So those two songs specifically, I had never played with a band before, but I did write them by myself, but kind of bringing them in um, to Laurel and Katie and trying to bring those parts together. They had a big hand in writing their own parts to it, which especially like the first time that they wrote harmonies to everything. And so, because I don't really do that at all that's totally their domain is where they're like okay here's where this harmony is going to go and we're going to stack it this way in this order and I'm like cool <laughs> yeah sounds great like um so they really take a lot of liberties with that which is a, such such a big part of what this band is now is I really think all of us singing together um but God Given Right is one song and 18 is the other song I wrote those initially just on acoustic uh the structure and the lyrics and the melody and everything um but God Given Right really needed like a you know like a really cool like driving drum beat like a driving bass line just to have the right feel because I had played that song acoustically before and several people were like, yeah, I don't know that that's one of your best songs. And I was like, it's supposed to be with a band. <laughs> like, it really needs, like, the energy behind mm -hmm. it. So they really provided that. And right now, we're in the process of writing songs as a band, which is something I'm thrilled about, um, which is, I know, pretty new for all of us to write together. 
because we all kind of do solo stuff too. And we kind of write on our own and do things like that. So that's a process we're getting more into. And I'm, I'm really excited to see what comes from that. Can you speak on the recording process a bit? Like where did you record and how was that? Yeah, we recorded at the Jam Room with Jay Matheson here in Columbia um, over in Rosewood. And um, none of us had ever recorded uh, quite that way before. I think um, Laurel had never recorded drums. Katie hadn't recorded bass before in the studio. Um, so, I mean, I had been in the studio before, but not to play like electric guitar in front, like a rock um, thing quite like that. So we had a really good time doing it. We went in the studio over the course of three days mainly and we set everything up and recorded it live in the room together. And then we kind of went back and overdubbed and redid some of the vocals. We redid some of the instrument parts, added more guitar to it. Um, so I think now both of those songs probably have several guitar tracks stacked on top of each other. There's like electric guitar, another electric guitar, acoustic guitar, a 12 string guitar. <laughs> um, but one of them was live and the rest of them kind of were not added on top. Um, and yeah, Laurel and Katie, you guys want to speak on that at all? Sure. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like she said, like I'd never recorded drums before. I was like, when Paisley kind of approached me originally to be, you know, playing for her originals, I was very new to drums. I wasn't, uh, you know, someone who played a lot or had ever even recorded. So uh, she kind of helped me guide in that way. I think a lot of the stuff that I learned about how to play with a band or things like that, like dynamic wise, uh, you know, kind of learned that as I was playing with her. Um, so that was really cool, but the recording was interesting. Like we were able to all be in the same room when we did like, uh, you know, our kind of base level, like live track, uh, which was so much better because, you know, when you're recording and you're trying to make a song really big, but you're either all in separate rooms or you're just playing to a demo, like you're by yourself, the vibe is different. And I feel like the energy is different and you can't really see each other or do, you know, like, I don't know, that's why I re like, that's why listening and going to see music live is so much more, you know, fulfilling, I think is because things and the energy is different when you're all together. So I liked recording that way because then it would also, you know, help me put me at ease a little bit of the nerves of like trying to get everything perfect. Like I was able to see Paisley's cues and, you know, watch Katie, what she's doing. And so I know that I'm like on it. So I enjoyed like being able to actually see them and not have to be in a separate room by myself, just like repeating or punching in certain parts. It was kind of nice to, to be able to do it, you know, straight through so I know where I'm going and I know the dynamic and stuff. Yeah, it is, it's definitely a different dynamic when it's with <laughs> folks and especially folks that you like, which is so much fun because you hear it come back and like hit you in the face, but you're like having that shared moment with these other people that you like made it with and it's super cool. Cause I'm just used to like recording at home and stuff anyway. And so it's, that's all I'd really done before. So like going and like having to play bass and then like, hearing the magic just like repeated back to you is really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel like even the vocals that we did were fun to do because stacking on top of it, you could really hear more clearly like where you were going with things and um, just have it a little bit more organized and stuff too. Um, hear it kind of planned out, but it was so much fun because we had <laughs> I, I disposable cameras. We took a bunch of disposable cameras in there and that was like one of my favorite things we did because we have a bunch of uh, pictures to use now and things also, but um, yeah, I don't know, just a fun time. That's so sick. I like the idea of taking the camera because then even if like you're old, you can remember like the first time you recorded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think agree. also we were like, it would be great for us to not have our phones bothering us in the studio, but we wanted to take a lot of pictures. We were like, we should do some actual cameras. <laughs> like some old disposable cameras. That was definitely cool. And you said the two that you just released were God Given Right and 18, correct? Yeah. Do you want to talk about a little bit what those songs kind of are about or what they mean to you? Sure. Um, 
So God Given Right was one. There used to be this songwriters club uh, meeting type thing in Columbia uh, that met at the Wired Goat. This has been several years ago. And I think when I was 16 or 17, I started going to that. I was like just in college and um, I really wanted to have the input and opinion of other songwriters. And there were a lot of really good people in there. And um, they would give you topics every week to write a song about. And everybody would share their songs. And uh, the one topic that they gave us that week was the devil. <laughs> and um, I was, uh, I'm always like very contrarian or like um, devil's advocate a little bit. So I was like, how can I spin this in a way that's not just like the devil is dark and everything is bad. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, what if, um, what if I kind of twisted it a little? I really like um, to play with religious themes and um, things like that. Uh, so I was like, what if the devil gave me all these really pretty things to trick people with and do bad <laughs> things because of, um, but there's, uh, there's this one line in the song that I think is really funny uh, that says, but the devil gave me this ugly smile. So they'd blame all my sins on my youth. And I, I just have this crooked tooth right here. <laughs> I feel like it makes me look younger than I am so I was kind of talking about that I was like oh people think you know whatever she's silly young she's making mistakes but it's really like a it's like a trick like you know <laughs> but um I don't know that was kind of silly and then um I think part of it the chorus is talking about I have a god-given right to be angry and I have a god-given right to be crazy and it says at one point, I have a God-given right to feel guilty for all the ways that I should change. Um, I think it's really trying to accept, uh, you know, that all your bad things are a part of you and that they're not something that you should try to cut out, you know, and abandon. Um, you, you do have a right, you know, as a human to feel the full spectrum of emotions and explore all of those. And I think at that time in my life, you know, 17, like I was really coming into myself as a person and like learning about who I was. And I had a lot of, you know, um, just 17, 19, 18, those years are kind of tough because you're like, I'm an adult now. What do I do? There's kind of a lot of darkness that surrounds finding yourself. Um, and that's what that song was about for me. Um, and then, 18 I wrote oh it's kind of like a breakup song um I was I was dating somebody who was kind of older than me and it was a very on and off sort of thing and I went through a lot of heartache because of it and um, I was actually 19 when I wrote that song but I was living in Olympia at the time by myself and it was like really late at night one night and I picked it up and I was like I'm gonna write a song that is simple but true. I don't know. That was my thing in mind. So all of the lyrics in that one are really blunt. They're just like, um, uh, it's very, it's phrased like, I thought we were pure and I thought you were good. And like, I gave you what I could, like, it's just all these really short, blunt statements because I didn't really have very much to say about it. Um, but I, I knew that I wanted it to be simple, even with the chord structure. So there's several times, you know, it, it, the, the verses kind of just go between two chords the whole time. I just wanted to have almost like a meditative, like conversational sort of feel as if I was like talking to that person. So that's what that one turned out to be. And it's really interesting because I've, I had a friend of mine give me a compliment the other day that just blew my mind. He was like, 18 does everything I want it to do as a songwriter. He was like, every part of it is exactly where I would want to hear or where I want it to go. And that was, you know, I think that's one of the best compliments I've ever gotten as a songwriter um, because I felt like I was really coming into my own as a songwriter when I wrote that one. And I think once I did write it, I was really surprised with myself. I was like, wow, you did that. <laughs> you, you wrote that. That's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, that song has, a, both of those songs have a real special place in my heart. Um, but yeah, so we actually did a demo of 18 before we even went in the studio. Um, we did two demos of it. We did one in a friend's uh, home studio, and then we recorded that one live in another home. Uh, <laughs> we did like separate tracks for the first one and then we did it together for the next one and that's where we really figured out that that's how we wanted to do it at the jam room when we recorded uh was we really liked the live feel and I always love old records that sound live anyway so 
yeah, I think that contributed to those songs sounding the way they do. But yeah. And I know we talked to you almost exactly to the day last year on air. Um, yeah, I guys had it was my it was my birthday last year, and my same. birthday is on oh, Saturday. Oh, same. Oh, same. <laughs> You're right. That's oh my god. Wait, that's right. You have to that's so crazy. I forgot about that. Yes. Happy early birthday. Happy birthday to you too. <laughs> <laughs> The 21st this year, so I'm excited. <laughs> oh, that's a good year. That's a good one. But um, you guys had so many plans that were like shows that you had or like things that you were going to do and then kind of COVID hit. So how have you guys been dealing with that as a band? Because I know it's kind of like dead halted almost everything in the music industry right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at first, at first we were really concerned about it. Uh but I think it ended up giving us the free time to actually be able to go into the studio and record because all of us are in a lot of different musical projects and we all have jobs, you know? So I don't know when else we would have found the time to record. It probably would have been more stressful to try to do that. So COVID helped us out in that way. But um, I think it definitely took some of the wind out of our sails, took some of the momentum that we're just now finally getting back into because of the single release and all that stuff, um, trying to work on new songs and things felt kind of fruitless because we're like, what are we going to do with these? Are we going to play them? Are we going to like, it was, I don't know, just, um, it, but it did help us get back into making music for the sake of making music instead of having a goal in mind, which is, I think how everybody starts out, you know, just jamming for fun. So we did some of that, which was kind of new for us, but yeah, you guys want to talk about it? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I know, like you said, we're all in a bunch of different bands and things like that. So it, you know, I think it, it definitely freed up our time. Uh, <laughs> Cause yeah, I had a lot of shows that I was going to be out of town for. Um, and, you know, we were having to kind of work around that. So, you know, pretty much every single show that I had with that other band ended up getting canceled, you know, cause we can't travel and we can't have, you know, a lot of people gathering. Um, so yeah, it just gave us a bunch of time. I think that like you said about uh, playing music for the sake of playing music, um, you kind of, yeah, when there's no show to prep for or there's no, um, I don't know, there's, yeah, like an end goal in sight, like you're kind of just left with, okay, like I'm not prepping for anything. Should I just play something that I actually like just enjoy playing? Like when I first started this song, like I was just playing it because it felt so good to play it and it was, you know, something I was learning and something I was excited to learn. And so kind of starting back, not starting over necessarily, but it was, you know, just a huge pause button and, you know, kind of finding, still finding joy in like, cause when you're a musician and that's what you do for a living, you know, sometimes it's hard to separate, you know, playing music because you love it versus like, I have to do this to survive and to make money and to, you know, it has, it has to be a job. Um, you know, it has to become a job. Uh, so it was interesting having the job aspect of it. Cause you know, so many people obviously in their jobs like struggled. Um, and I think that, you know, it was such a difficult time, but I think that we, you know, were blessed in a sense to still be able to do something that we loved, you know, even though we didn't have that that job that we had to go to every day or the gig that we had to prepare for. So it was kind of like finding your love of it and, you know, finding like a reason to write, even though, you know, you're not going to perform it for six months. Like, so something like that. So that was at least for me, you know, but getting the time at least to practice, I think was, you know, a blessing in disguise, obviously, like we were able to actually record them, practice them, like plan out things that were, you know, more intentional than that we did before. Like, our social media presence or like how we could do live streams to people who can't come see us live, you know, for whatever reason, I think that that was something that we were able to, you know, evolve and get out of it. And I think that most musicians have kind of had to change the way they do everything, you know, um, and just evolve as a, as a musician and, and be more creative with how you're going to put yourself out there and how you're going to, um, you know, represent yourself as a musician and as a band. Cause that's kind of what it did for us too, is it gives you so much time to focus towards, I guess, like the social media aspect of it too. 
So, I mean, it, it's also fun because even though, you know, we had no places to go or play and we weren't really getting that content, it was like, well, we can still get together somehow so that we can, you know, still keep this thing running or have something kind of go on also. Mm -hmm. But it is so much fun to just play without, you know, a little bit of pressure on you, you know, when you're playing these original songs, you really want to feel them out because that's like what they were meant to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can get a little numb to that sometimes. And mm -hmm. it's nice to revamp every once in a while too. Um, not to that's a really, <laughs> that's a really good point because I think we were getting kind of numb to the originals that we had, you know, we were like, we still need to rehearse, but, um, I, whenever we did this live stream that we did, uh, last Thursday exactly a week ago to celebrate our single release we did the songs acoustically which was crazy how much life that added to them because it was different from how we normally play them I think whenever we had the rehearsal for that we were all like whoa we do like playing these songs we we're just <laughs> sick of doing it this way <laughs> I love playing now <laughs> let's do another acoustic one so I know you mentioned that you just had a live stream. How is that different than um, like an in-person show where you have like a crowd to work off of and like kind of the feeling of it, I guess? Um, I've always been very performance oriented. Like it's so much a part of my personality that it's hard for me to turn it off. Like when I'm in groups of people, like my brain is like, say the craziest thing you could think of. Now go, get everybody's <laughs> attention. So and true. um. I think for me, I kind of liked it because I didn't have that going on as much. Sometimes when we play in front of a crowd, I, I get just, I don't know, my, something in my brain's like, you have everybody's attention, do something crazy. Like, it's like this old devil on my shoulder who's like, do it, do it. Um, so I think our live shows get kind of fun, you know, because of that. Uh, they definitely have a lot of energy but the live stream that we did felt really relaxed. It felt like a gym. it was at my house. So it just felt like we were all hanging out and playing music for fun at my house is, is the, I think the vibe of that. Um, and I, we, you know, we had comments coming in and we, we knew that people were watching. So I think it still kind of turned on that little performance mode that all performers have. It's like a switch in your head. You're like, okay, now I'm on camera, you know, but, um, or now I'm in front of people. Uh, but it was fun. I liked, it felt like less pressure for sure. Um, which is kind of weird. I think, I know sometimes for Laurel and Katie, we talked about this before. Sometimes it can feel like more pressure because you're like, this is going to be on the internet forever. Everybody's going to be able to see it whenever, whatever mistakes I made. Um, whereas a live show, you know, you do it once and it's over. Um, and most people don't even notice the mistakes. So I think, um, for me, it was less pressure because there wasn't a big audience in front of me. Um, but I don't know, Laurel and Katie, was it more pressure for you guys? How did it feel? Uh, I, I mean, it took some of the pressure off even just having those few people there, I think too, because uh, when you perform, you still, it's, it's weird because doing a few live streams and stuff too, like over this period of COVID and, and things, it's just like, um, you can forget that there is an audience there in the first place, especially just like Paisley said. So it's, it's, it, it takes a little bit of the stress off, but it's also like, okay, I should not talk about like dancing turtles or anything right now, or anything like that. but you know, it's different for everybody. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I totally. Yeah. 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 No, I get that. I think I, I agree with that. I think it's, it's, it's not necessarily better or worse. I think people do have a favorite, like, you know, live, live shows versus something like streaming like that. But I think at least for me, I did enjoy being able to, you know, really hear each other and really like pay attention to detail and, you know, kind of invest and really get yourself kind of in the zone. Because when, like Paisley said, when mm -hmm. you are performing live, mm -hmm. you kind of have this full on switch that changes to like, okay, I'm on stage, I'm about to perform, like I'm keeping this going and I'm keeping this conversation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the energy is there. And so people aren't necessarily hyper focused on what you're doing. So it's kind of a big fun party when you're doing it live, at least for me, it kind of is. Um, 
and you can kind of laugh things off and people like the energy that you have when you're having fun. And um, you can do that in a live stream, but it's so different, you know, uh, like, you know, just having it on the internet or whatever. But uh, I enjoy being able to kind of be in an intimate setting where you could focus on the details of what you're playing and you could, you know, feel the, the dynamics rise and fall and, uh, you know, it was kind of nice having a break in between where we could answer questions or, you know, kind of banter with each other in a light way that wasn't you know, super chaotic. Um, and, you know, cause when we do live sh- songs, like when we do live shows, for me at least sometimes I like, I don't black out, but there's a certain extent where you're like, you get done with the show and you're like, we're done. Like, you're just like on a different adrenaline level where you're like, I kind of blacked out, like what happened? And so sometimes like, at least for me, like when I'm doing big live shows, that's how I feel. And you're just so adrenaline pumping and you're just saying the moment that when you get done, you're like, how was it? I don't remember. I don't remember how it was. Um, but I guess with, you know, the live stream, you're just able to be more, more in the, mo- like more focused on each other, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then I know you're all like an all female band. Was that something that was intentional or did it just happen to be that? How did that come together? <laughs> um, I have always wanted to be in an all female band and I've tried gosh, probably like four times before this band to form them. And um, I think I got as far as making a Facebook page for one of them one time. And then we like broke up and it wasn't a thing anymore. But I think also the problem was that I always um, was looking for, I don't know, looking for people just because they were uh, female um, and not you know, not looking for people who were musicians as well. It's like, I would always find, um, find people who were like, yeah, I kind of play music sometimes. And I was like, be in my band. Um, but Laurel and Katie were both so talented already. And, um, I think just, you know, it's not that often that you meet people who, first of all, are, I mean, they're two of my best friends in the whole world. Like, I, I don't, I don't say that with any exaggeration or hesitation, like, um, and just to, I mean, and I was friends with them before the band. So to find people who, you know, are, who find each other worthy of friendship and of closeness and being able to share that through a bond of music too, and having them be so talented um quite frankly it feels like like fate or you know like um like I don't know how that it was actually funny because we realized that at one point when we were growing up we all lived within a few blocks of each other and didn't even know it like in the same neighborhood and never even knew each other Mm -hmm. and we were like we've been around each other our whole lives and didn't meet until a couple of years ago Mm -hmm. and became really close and really tight and um and just started making this music. And I think it's pushed us all. Like, I know for a fact that it's pushed me um, being in a band with other females. Cause sometimes, you know, it's like, you almost don't rank yourself against men. Sometimes, like if I see a guy doing something, there's not a thing that goes off in my brain. That's like, you could do that. Try to be better than that, you know? Or like, it's not like a friendly competition thing. I'm like, uh, you know, he's doing his thing, whatever. But I think there's a difference there when you see somebody who reminds you of yourself, obviously the representation like, and watching Katie and Laurel be so good has been so inspirational for me. Like, I mean, that's the biggest word. It's been inspirational. It has fueled my creativity even more to be surrounded by such talented women who are, you know, like to have that comparison and that that, um, thing to look up to in a way that's not like totally separate, like, oh, there's a guy doing this. And, you know, I don't quite know why that matters so much. I've had a lot of conversations about that. I've had multiple people tell me that I should recruit guys to be in the band. We actually had a couple of dudes play bass for us before Katie joined and it just wasn't the right fit. I think there, you know, there's a certain bond that can come with um, a space where you get to be with people who are, you know, identify as your gender or things like that. Like there's a different sort of camaraderie there, you know, like how people say, oh, like it's a boys club or like it's a, 
you know how you can be in a band with your bros and they're like your brothers and you're like it's a whole mm -hmm. thing there's like a I different it, level of bond and it has it's kind of like you know i mean you know gender aside or whatever it's like you're on a, a team when you have a team when you have a teammate you know what i mean you look out for them and you respect them and you're you know they drive you to be better and things like that i think is like you know the way the, that it relates in my mind like you know you have a teammate or you you know it's kind of like when you have a bandmate you know um, and I think one of the really important things, you know, that came to my mind when you were talking Paisley was that, you know, you have more uh, inspiration than you do competition because those things are very different. And I think that they can get confused a lot of times in like, you know, traditional female settings has, you know, there's been an air of competitiveness. And I think that that is not the same as um, like support and it's not the same as being inspired by someone being inspired by someone you know um, like there's an artist uh, I think her name is Liana Lajeves and I love her so much like vocally and she plays guitar really well and I just admire her so much so when I hear her it makes me want to write things like that or things that give you that same feeling um you know, or the same like feeling that you get when you hear some first song that you love so much that you're like, why have I never heard this before? You know, and like hearing her or like, you know, even like Katie and Paisley playing their originals and like their own style, hearing how it differs from mine, but how, how my, I want to achieve that same feeling with my stuff. Like, I think that that's where, you know, inspiration plays in more than it's not a competition thing. And I think that that's super important when you're in any kind of group, um, when you have to play as a team, is that, you know, not everything has to be a competition because we're all so different. And that can be like celebrated rather than used against each other, if that makes sense. Because it does come down to that like constructive criticism versus just like bantering in general too, you know, kind of in mm -hmm. a way. Yeah, I remember like sitting down with Paisley and like, hanging out and just writing for the first time and stuff too and it was just something that I hadn't experienced before and I was like well this is pretty cool mm -hmm. you know somebody that can actually help you with your stuff rather than say yes or no mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's like a constructive criticism thing or it's a it's a learning experience is what I would use it as you know like you could just say like it, everything that you are hearing or learning from something else like there's been times in band practices where like we're trying something out with a new song and we don't really know where we're going with it yet. And I'll try something and, or Paisley will try something or whatever. And, you know, you have to be honest with each other. It's like, I like this second half of this part, but the first half of the other thing you tried. And it's like, oh, okay, like, let's try it. Let's experiment with it rather than like, how dare you not like what I did? Like, it's not, you know, it, it, you get rid of the competition, you get rid of, you know, kind of a prideful thing because there's no, there's no winning in a situation if not, if you, all of you don't win. You know what I mean? Like you don't succeed as a band unless your bass player is killer and your songwriter's on point and she's playing the right stuff and your drummer's on it. Like you don't succeed as, as a band if just one of you is, you know, projecting forward. Like you kind of all have to push each other forward in a way and then you guys succeed together because you don't, you don't necessarily win unless all of you do. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's kind of my thought process on it. Do you think that um, outside of the band, like maybe like people have booked you or like sound people that have worked for you or anything have ever kind of treated you differently or like, because I know from people that I've been talking to that that's kind of been like a, they're like, oh, you know what you're talking about kind of thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I, I've been playing gigs professionally since I was 12. Uh, like as soon as I started playing guitar, my dad was like, all right, we're booking you gigs, like learn three hours of music. We're going to be like all through middle school. I was playing like three nights a week, like three hours a night sometimes like, and I have to say the culture, you know, that we live in is changing rapidly. I think the internet causes things to shift so quickly. And there's been a huge difference in everything that's happened since I mean the Me Too movement has happened just within the last few years and um you know I've played multiple instruments and in bands I was the drummer in two different bands and um I'm the bass player in another band and 
you know, I'm lucky to say that I haven't experienced a ton of, um, I, you know, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but nobody's ever really invalidated me for being a female musician. But sometimes what happens is that by trying to compliment you, it really comes across as a little bit sexist. Like I, people will be like, oh, you're a great drummer for a girl. And it's like, okay, like that's yeah. a compliment, but it's not, you know? And um, I mean, I've had things happen to me in my career where I mean, just without going into detail, like I've had sexual harassment issues that I've had to deal with from people who are supposed to be professionals who you work with. And I, you know, I think that's definitely an issue. We know that females have to face more than males. It's not exclusive or otherwise. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's just been really interesting because I think whenever things happen, you can tell that you're like this would not have happened to me if I was a guy you know like it's not like it's it's just strange and you know it's not to say that bad things don't happen to everybody or that not everybody you know as a musician like you're gonna get a lot of criticism you're gonna get a lot of hate being a public mm -hmm. figure on the internet which almost everybody just is nowadays mm -hmm. you know everything's public um you're gonna get people saying whatever they want to say and um I don't think it's very often that we experience it but it it does exist um and you know most of the time it's people who are a little bit older most of the young people who I know have a, a very different mindset about things and um because like I said I we all play in other bands with guys too like I play in a bass and a trio with um ben and blake uh two of my friends and katie plays in another band outer ego and every other member is a guy and laurel mm -hmm. plays on another band called sire and mm -hmm. most of the members are guys um you have a female bass player yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's not that um you know it's it's not that we wanted to be an all-female band uh because it was like some thing against guys honestly it's just a stronger level of camaraderie and whenever those things do happen it's it, it's almost like an us against not the world but like an us against this culture or this like regressive uh uh ideas that still exist you know it, it really helps the bond when you're like okay we're all going through this and um it's this thing that most guys aren't going to relate to or have to experience you know just because of statistics I mean not saying that they wouldn't but it's just yeah. pretty common that and that's actually funny because when we started the band uh several of the band practices we had were us just letting each other know and talking about all the creepy experiences <laughs> we had had with different guys around Columbia yeah. or around the scene we'd be like oh my god this guy said this crazy thing to me stay away from him and be like he said <laughs> something to me too and it was like us just like weeding out all the people we were like yo these mm -hmm. people are not cool and it's like uh you know I it's I just don't think that's quite an experience that a lot of guys are going to say that they have bonded over the harassment that they've endured <laughs> <laughs> you know like yeah. like um it's such a strange place to be in because you don't want to step on anybody's toes you know you don't want to like all of us have brothers and boyfriends and friends and fathers and and we're not you know trying to say anything bad about that but it's like even those people sometimes I think you it helps to have somebody on your side who has also gone through what you've gone through and is not just sympathizing but can empathize you know yeah if yeah if I could add to to that I think that you know, when I first started, you know, playing drums, I, I think I experienced a level of, you know, pressure, but I think it was honestly put on myself because there's a lot. And like, you know, Paisley said, I do think that there's, and especially in either our own age, like range, you know, um, but, you know, we have experienced like there's a, there's a different, there's a different change in culture. You know, we do have so much support and I love that. Um, I think, but there was, there was still a kind of a sense that, you know, because of traditional like culture ideas, even embedded, like kind of, I've noticed at least in myself, like I'm not going to speak for anybody else, but at least in me, 
things that have kind of been embedded that I didn't realize were just like cultural and not something that was necessarily a correct way of thinking. Like, um, like I had a pressure on myself when we were first, first doing gigs. I, there was one thing where I like, I forgot the throne to my drum kit. Like the, one of the key things you need to sit down and play drums. And I was so upset with myself because I felt like as a female drummer, you know, there's more expectation to know what you're doing because not necessarily people don't expect you to, but you know, like I've known guy drummers all the time who are like, oh, I forgot this. And they have their buddy bring it to them or they ask the other band to bring it to them. But when I had forgotten like my throne, like I was so upset at myself that I didn't want to ask another band because I didn't want to, you know, kind of reveal to them that I was still learning, you know, which is not a bad thing if you're learning and you're in the process. But I think because I was a female and myself to be a certain way, it, you know, I didn't want the other men around me to see that there was that because I felt like it would make me almost more vulnerable as a musician. And I didn't, and it was, you know, as you're a female, there is a last, there is an, or like, there's an aspect of vulnerability that goes with that. And so I didn't want that to play into anything or have anything to do with my gender or how I identify or whatever. I didn't want that to be a factor, but, um, you know, another, another funny side of that is one of the last shows that we played, um, with some friends of ours from Nashville. Um, they, their guitar player, his aunt was not working. Like during the first song, it cut off, something died in it. Um, and I had to let him use my amp and like, I mm -hmm. ran up there and gave it to him. And I think it's funny that, you know, it's like, if that happens because it's a guy, it's like your mindset is like, oh, he, you know, something went wrong. Like, or maybe, maybe you even think, oh, he's unprofessional. But I think a lot of times if it happens to a girl, it's like, oh, it's because she's a girl. Like she doesn't know what she's doing, <laughs> you know? Like that's yeah. immediately the and I, notion, you know? And I, I think that that's kind of what I'm thinking of. Like when, when things you realize might not even necessarily be, either like relevant anymore, but, or even, you know, and there is an aspect of it that's true, but I think since the culture is changing and, you know, there are more either female bands or female musicians and people feel more confident to speak out and be themselves and to, you know, be strong in whoever they are. Like, I love that. And I think that there is an aspect, you know, that um, in my own mind thinks like, oh, everyone's going to think this different of me because I'm a female, but that might not necessarily be true, like for everyone, because, you know, I know plenty of male musicians and plenty of, you know, <clears throat> female musicians or however you identify, it's like all different types of musicians who have been extremely supportive to a point where I was surprised almost, you know, and I think that that's something that I personally want to like carry that, that, you know, with me from, from now on, like towards male musicians, towards any kind of musician, like is like, I support you and what you're passionate about and who you are and what you want to do. Like, and I think that by kind of everybody, you know, living that out and being that way towards any kind of person, like that's what kind of changes the culture. And so I, uh, I think that, you know, I've at least relaxed a little bit in that. I do think that there's a little bit of a difference when you're anyone who is not the traditional sense of something. People are going to be like, oh, you're this for a girl or you're this for, you know, whatever. I think that it's like, you know, people are always going to do that. You no know, matter if you're not, you know, a traditional role of whatever it is you're doing. But I think, you know, I think that it's expanding a lot and I think the culture's changing and you know, for, you know, generations after us, I think we'll have such a different experience than either the generations before us or, you know, how there's only like maybe a handful of, you know, female rockers from the seventies. And, you know, I think even just the difference from then to now and how many people are present in the music industry of all different, you know, like um, just walks of life and different styles and stuff I think that you know even the generations after us it'll be such a, a crazy change I mean you already see some of it like morphing and stuff 
mm-hmm. telling people what gear they should buy in my day job and everything. It's like, you're gonna, gonna trust this person, you're not. I mean, but you do see a, a big shift after being there for so long and stuff. It's good to see things, people having a bit more of an open mind to that kind of stuff. Cause there is kind of a disconnect there for, I mean, just traditional reasons, I guess, but also, you know, geographical things. It just, it's, it's nice to see a change though on a positive side too. <laughs> um, yeah, Katie works at a music store and I used to work at that same music store. And that's something I forgot about when we were talking <laughs> about things. That I'm here now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy like that people would come in or call in and like I would suggest something to them and I'm sure Katie has this experience all the time and it's like they wouldn't want to hear it from you they would have to hear it from some old scruffy looking guy to believe it it's like like they think it makes sense because he's been out for years you know playing that stuff and it's just that's part of the way of the world if you've seen what you see it just makes more sense to kind of trust that sometimes too I don't know And I think that's really important for like things like this, just like visible representation, because like you said, like if you don't see it, then maybe you don't even believe that you can do it yourself, which I think hopefully, thankfully, we're getting more representation and not even just like as musicians, but even as like back of house people or like managers and stuff, because that's also pretty low percentage of women, unfortunately. Yeah, I yeah. did. I did a presentation one time for Girls Rock Columbia uh, when I used to volunteer with them. I don't have as much time anymore to do that, but I really enjoyed it. I gave a presentation about how, and I'm not sure if the, these statistics are the same now, but it was something like less than 1% or around 1% of all music engineers and producers were women and that like only one or two have ever been nominated for like a Grammy for those positions. Um, it's just, it's wild because I know, I know that Grimes is somebody who's really been behind her own, um, studio work and things like that. And I know now like Lana Del Rey and Taylor Swift are using female sound engineers and things like that, but they are hard to find. I mean, I don't, you know, and maybe this is my own lack of, of knowledge, but I do purposefully try to seek out more females to work with and um it's very difficult to find female you know whether it's live sound engineers or studio engineers um and you know producer is just kind of a vague description of a job anyways because the lines of what you do as a producer are so blurred you're like put this instrument here do this with it you know um so we produced our own music which I was really proud of because um I had considered working with a few different guys who I liked their music and I was like, maybe they could help me put the vision together. And honestly, that's why it took me so long to feel confident to go into the studio to record is because I wanted to make sure I knew how to fully put it together with a quality that I was okay with, you know, with a level of craft craftsmanship that I was okay with putting out and representing us. Um, but I wanted to be able to say like, we produce that, like nobody had to come in and tell us that you should do this here, or you should do this here. Since it was our first time, you know, mixing, we definitely had Jay's input. Um, Laurel's brother, Kyle helped us out, gave us some tips. Our friend Ian, like we sent it around. We were like, what do you think? But I mean, aside from a couple of minor decisions, we did the whole thing. You know, we decided what instrumentation needed to be there, the arrangements, the structure, um, just everything, everything that was done to that, it was us. And I really wanted to be able to say that when we got done with it. I didn't want to have to say that, you know, we had a bunch of other people step in and help us out. Um, And, you know, whether or not the quality of it could have been better or, you know, you're always going to go back and see things that you could have done different. But um, that was the biggest goal for me personally, for any sort of music that I was going to release as I was like, I want to be the one to produce it. And I want to be the one to know what all is going into it. And ha- because I've heard music from people and songwriters, like fellow women that I really respect, but it's like, I'll hear their music and be like, like studio recordings and it'll sound like they're not out front or like the guitar was too loud like or things like that and you'll look and I'll be like oh well a guy the guitar player produced it and like put his guitar louder than 
her voice or, you know, it's like, I just wanted to make sure that the, cause producing is something that is really an mm-hmm. interesting job. You know, it's putting the full package together. It's almost like the director of a movie. It's like the person with the vision for what the final product really needs to look like. Um, and I think that there's almost no part of the recording process that a producer can't put their hands on if they want to. And that's really the point of it. And um, I think if we were to have somebody else produce it, uh, it wouldn't have had our mark on it. It wouldn't have represented us quite as well, even if perhaps the quality is maybe not as good as somebody who's been producing things, you know, their whole life. I, you know, I just am really, truly proud to say that like us three young girls were able to put together this music to the level that we have. Um, essentially pretty much all on our own with the support from some really great friends and family. Um, But that's something I really, you know, like if I never did anything else in my career, in my life, like that would be a goal that I'm really proud of that we did. So. And then do you have any advice that you would give someone trying to like maybe break into the music industry or start their own band or like kind of anything like that? Um, my advice to somebody coming into it would be that you should reach out to people who you like and maybe ask for constructive criticism because that's one of the most invaluable things uh, for a musician, you know, whether it's a teacher that you trust or a parent or some an, another musician, because you're not always going to be able to see when you're starting out, you know, um, I think constructive criticism is a very important thing. And, uh, uh, you know, I even now appreciate the input of all my friends and um, who are talented and who I know are not going to tell me anything that's purposefully to, to let me down. I would say that. And I would also say on the other side of it, the music industry, it's a business just like anything else. Um, and it is shifting as rapidly as anything is nowadays, but especially with COVID, I mean, just the entire model of the music business is because of streaming, you know, it's almost like you're not even trying to sell your music anymore because, because of streaming, there's not very much value in just recordings. You know, it's like, you have to sell merch. You have to try to sell a physical product. You have to make money from tours. And then now that touring has halted, it's like, well, how do I even make money from this anymore? And we all have day jobs, but my advice to an up and coming musician would be, this is a weird industry and you have to be really creative and you have to be willing to try new things and to try to pioneer ahead. Because if you're waiting on somebody to, you know, to sign you for a record contract or tell you what you should look like or what your music should sound like. Like this is an industry where you really, unless you're going to, you know, be signed to a record deal and have somebody make you into something, which almost doesn't even happen as much anymore because, you know, record, record labels are looking for somebody who has it together and who already kind of has a fan base. So it's, I mean, it's essentially like being a business owner. Like you have to pioneer your own sound, your brand, your image. Um, You have to market, you have to sell. So being a musician in this, in this day and age is not even just about the music, which is wild, you know, because that's your product. But then now it's like, that's not what you really make the most money from. It's like, that's like a launch board for you to make money from other things is like, if your music is good, then somebody might, you know, buy a bunch of merch and it's, it's just so strange, but it's like, you're not making money from the music. Mm. So I don't know, that would be my speech to uh, somebody who's getting started. Did you guys- um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was going to say, I was just going to add, um, you know, I agree with what Paisley is saying. I think that it is kind of interesting how, how things have shifted, you know, um, everything is so online and, you know, you have to be marketable or whatever that means. And you have to, you know, but I think at the base of it, it's, you know, if you're going to start a band, surround yourself like with people that you respect and people that you trust. Um, because, you know, if you're, you know, not sure if they're talking about you to other people or if they're, you know, do, you know, 
downplaying what you're doing to someone else or, you know, they just don't, you just have to be around people that you trust and people that you enjoy. Um, I'm in another band with six people. Like I know Katie can, like, we can all relate to this on some level. Like, you know, Katie's in a band with multiple people. The more people you have, you know, the more of a communication that you need to have. So communication is extremely important. Making sure people know that like, you know, I'm telling you this because I respect you and because it's my honest opinion, not because I'm critical or because I'm upset with you. It's like communication is really important. People that you respect and trust um, and trust in, in life in general. Um, and obviously as musicians, but, you know, kind of getting, getting in some ways, getting out of your own way. Um, and that means, you know, getting over certain fears or certain insecurities that you have. It's like to a certain extent, you know, you got to get out of your own way in that and, uh, you know, tell yourself that if this is something that you really want, then you need to prove that to yourself and you need to um, prove to yourself that you can, you know, work at this as if it were a job or, um, you know, take it seriously in that way. And, uh, you know, not letting fear hold you back from performing or from experimenting with your music um, and just, you know, kind of being creative and trying new things and and, you know, if something doesn't work, then don't take it to heart and move on and try something else, uh, you know, and you not have to, because you're going to get like, you, you know, you're going to get criticism and you're going to get failure a lot. And it's just something that you have to get used to and not let it knock you down and just keep trying. Seems like the most success of people local and broad speaking too, is just like, like Laurel said, just not really doubting yourself. I mean, you can put yourself down in some ways and say, you know, I think this sounds bad, but again, that's not doubting yourself again. If you don't think it's, if you think it sounds bad, you should go with that gut feeling. Um, but that's how you progress. If you, if you kind of put all of your, I guess, eggs out there, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Then you, uh, you can kind of, uh, arrange them a lot better, which is, which is nice. So Keeping some organization for sure too is definitely number one. Um, and band speaking in any other time, just time management is a number one thing too. And spending time with your band so that you can get again that camaraderie also because yeah. it's and very outside important. of practice, <laughs> yeah. not just yeah. seeing each other practice. You know, spending time with each other as people without having to think of work with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for doing this. I want to keep you all day. So I guess <laughs> up there, but everyone should definitely go check out their two latest releases and you can get to that on Spotify and where else? Um, it's everywhere that music is out. We have it on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Um, you can also find all of our stuff, our dates, our music, everything on our website, paisleyandthebirdwalkers.com all just one long word so <laughs> well thank you guys so much